speakers. So the, the second speaker, we are delighted to have Dr. Conrad Tucker uh, from uh, you know, Carnegie Mellon University introducing very interesting, uh, presenting very interesting talk, uh, study about the generative adversarial networks for design. Yep. Thanks, Dr. Tucker. Thank you very much and uh, uh, welcome. So today I'm going to be uh, giving a talk on work that was funded by uh, DARPA and these are our collaborators and uh, the first author is my uh, PhD student who uh, led the uh, analysis of this work. So I'm going to start with uh, a question by showing three different objects and, and asking, well, what do they have in common? So there's a there's a wedding ring, there's an aircraft, there's a, a coffee mug. And so um, if you were to look at these different designs, one of the uh, aspects that unites these different, seemingly different functional and aesthetic designs is that they can be conceptualized by uh, existing CAD-based tools. Now, many of us in our courses do teach some form of CAD design and the process typically involves the use of a commercial software where students learn more about the, the parametric uh, aspects of um, designing a wide range of, of functional uh, objects. Now, while this uh, has um, demonstrated capabilities and, and is used in industry today, uh, some of the challenges, as many of you know, are just the learning curve uh, that is involved in, in um, gaining expertise in these and also the constraint of just the, the way that a designer can conceptualize what's, uh, what's feasible. So if you look deeper in, into this problem and ask, well, what is this surface? Uh, you can say that a surface is a collection of, of triangles and delving uh, even um, farther into this, you can say uh, these are a collection of points. So our motivation here is to uh, see if we can train a uh, generative, generative adversarial network uh, to learn the uh, the state of these points, each of these points in, in um, 3D coordinate space, and over time learn how to organize these points in a way that visually maps back to um, something a designer would create. And so hopefully uh, you can see that what's emerging from uh, this training process is an organization of points that form something that looks like an uh, aircraft. Uh, so for this to, to happen, we uh, leverage uh, the availability of publicly available da data sets such as uh, ShapeNet. And um, as you can see, these are 3D surfaces. So the first step is to transform these 3D surfaces into uh, point clouds. I'll explain why the surface mesh-based approach is um, more complicated to train a, a, a neural network. Uh, so this work is inspired by uh, um, uh, generative adversarial networks that was pioneered by Ian Goodfellow and uh, colleagues. You can think of these as two separate networks. So the generator network, you can think of that as the designer and the, the discriminator network, you can think of that as the designer critique. And um, there's an iterative process of uh, the designer learning from the, the discriminator until some steady state is, is reached and um, a convergence is reached. So what is that convergence? The generator learns to organize data in such a way that the discriminator feels, uh, the discriminator uh, classifies this as coming from the same probability distribution as the, the real world data. So specifically relating to our design problem and why it's difficult to take, uh, you know, these baseline algorithms from the computer science domain uh, don't necessarily map directly to engineering uh, design problems. So we had to uh, augment the generator algorithm to, uh, to fit the kind of 3D point cloud representation uh, that is found in, in our problem. So we start off with a collection of 2,500 points in XYZ space. Uh, a latent representation of that is encoded. And then the discriminator takes this uh, one by 1024 vector and has to classify it as 
uh, one design uh, or another. And once this pro process is, is completed, then there's another algorithm that applies this mesh over the optimized um, 3D point cloud. So what do the results look like? So now you're seeing um, fully end-to-end uh, -end designed uh, geometric uh, manifold um, uh, surfaces. Uh, hopefully these look like uh, aircrafts of different forms. Um, one of the um, interesting things about GANs is the fact that you have this latent uh, vector and based on how you uh, weight the um, uh, this lambda value, you can do uh, linear uh, interpolation or extrapolation, which uh, allows you to do uh, in an automated way uh, design uh, exploration. Uh, you can also do multi-class. So in, in the initial uh, um, goal, the, the discriminator was only determining if this came from a probability distribution of aircraft. Now we have uh, three classes of aircraft, Vehicle, um, automobiles and, and boats. And uh, you can, again, do some type of uh, latent uh, space optimization that combines these, um, these different classes. So this loop of designing and evaluating, so we've automated the kind of the, the generation part, but uh, the physics, you know, the feasibility, just because something's geometrically uh, visually appealing doesn't mean it's it's functional. So then we loop this uh, to you know you name your physics-based evaluator. So you then have this loop where you can actually start generating data as opposed to just relying on publicly available data. You have the environment now serving as a kind of filtering process of um, poor performing geometric designs. So by by doing so, you embed some correlation of physics uh, to the, the geometric uh, design. Uh, another great thing that the, the resulting um, generated output is in a file format that can be sent directly to a 3D printer. So the aircraft geometry that you've seen earlier uh, can be physically realized by um, you know, sending it to some additive manufacturing process. So now imagine instead of having this full uh, aircraft, obviously this is not how aircraft are designed. You have a collection of different components. Uh, think of being able to um, achieve that on a component by component uh, and assembly um, process. So in summary, we, uh, we trained a neural network to take a collection of points in 3D space and organize them in such a way that they um, visually uh, past the inspection of a, uh, a discriminator network, which can be thought of as the designer critique. Um, then a uh, surface mesh is applied to them. And then uh, the, uh, the physics functionality uh, is determined based on a uh, physics informed uh, simulator in environment that then forms this nice loop of design generation, evaluation, and, and filtering. So I thank you for your time. Uh, more details about this work are um, in the paper and I open up for any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you.